In this video, we're going to demonstrate the ability of a buffer to resist changes in pH when strong acid or base is added, and talk about and calculate buffer capacity. What we have here are two solutions with equal pHs, approximately 4.7. On the right, we have a simple strong acid solution of HCl at a concentration of 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5 molar, which, if you take the negative base 10 logarithm of that, comes out to a pH of 4.7. We have 250 milliliters of that, and we also have 250 milliliters of a buffer solution on the left-hand side that contains acetic acid as well as sodium acetate. And we've adjusted the amounts of the acid and its conjugate base such that the pH is again 4.7. We also have 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution as well as methyl red indicator, which is going to show us visually what happens to the pH as we add strong base. So we'll add methyl red indicator to both of these solutions and stir a little bit to give the solutions some color. And next what we're going to do is add equal volumes of the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution to each beaker. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so the pH of the solutions should go up. We add 10 drops of that solution to the right-hand hydrochloric acid solution, which is approximately half a milliliter, and we add that same number of drops to the buffer solution on the left. After stirring, we see that the indicator changes color in the HCl solution, but remains red in the buffer solution, and the pH readings in the two solutions indicate that the pH has increased drastically in the HCl solution, approaching 9.9, .9, while the pH has remained at 4.7 in the buffer solution. So the buffer solution has resisted a change in pH, thanks to the ability of the acetic acid to react with the added strong base. We can quantify the ability of the HCl solution and the buffer to resist changes in pH using the concept of buffer capacity. We define buffer capacity quantitatively as the number of moles of, in this case, strong base added, moles of hydroxide, divided by the observed change in pH. So you can imagine a buffer which has the ability to resist changes in pH will exhibit a larger buffer capacity because of the smaller delta pH value in the denominator of this expression. Let's see if that holds up for the observations we just made. So in the initial pHs for both the HCl solution and the buffer solution were about 4.7, and let's call them both 4.70. After we added the 10 drops of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, we observed a final pH in the buffer solution of about 4.73, and in the case of the HCl, the final pH was about 9.89. To determine the moles of hydroxide added, all we have to do is multiply the concentration, 0.1 moles per liter, by the volume added, and we said that that was approximately half a milliliter, which is 0.0005 liters. So this is going to be the same value in both cases. It's going to be 5.0 times 10 to the negative 5 moles here added to the HCl and the same amount added to the buffer solution. The delta pH in the HCl case is relatively large. It's 9.89 minus 4.70 which comes out to 5.19 and it's much smaller over here in the buffer case. Delta pH here is a very, very tiny 0.03 pH units. So the buffer capacity in the HCl case comes out to 5.0 times 10 to the negative 5 divided by 5.19, which ends up being equal to 9.63 times 10 to the negative 6. We could put units on this, moles of strong base per pH unit of change in pH. In the case of the acetic acid acetate buffer, we get a much, much larger number since we're dividing by a very small number here. We end up with 1.67 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per pH unit. And qualitatively, what we can say is that it takes many more moles of strong base to cause a single unit change in pH for the buffer than it does to cause that same unit change in pH for the HCl solution. So the buffer resists the pH increasing effect of the strong base. Buffer capacity just allows us to illustrate this in a quantitative way. 